Hubbard, ladies and gentlemen. The Brownville High School big six quarterback, 1954 graduate, went to Salem College, little All-American accolades, transferred his football knowledge to the coaching ranks, 174 wins at Beth Center for 14 years. His coaching there led to a WPIA up front in 1975 and Ringgold from 79 to 84. He won the championship in 82. And uh, Billy concluded his career at Bell Vernon and in 1989 made it to the semifinals. Coach Connors also inducted into the Washington Green County Sports Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Billy Connors.
she just had a hip replacement and had one of her kidneys removed. So she would have been here. We've been married now 65 years. And uh, I'm 86. Valentine's in sixth grade. <laughs> so we're here together. My dad was a coal miner, and I'm really proud to be a coal, a coal miner's son. I was, when, I was, when I was 10 years old, all the boys in Maxwell joined the Boy Scouts. We had a great theater. And scout motto was, be prepared. That followed me throughout my life. Be prepared for practice. Be, be prepared, prepared for the game. Successful coaches, they're prepared. And now I'm 86, and someone said, I have a place prepared for you, and you better be prepared for that place. My Boy Scout master was a great one. He taught us to be trustworthy, honest, loyal, very clean, and reverent. That carried throughout my coaching career. He also wanted to make a man out of a boy. First had us swim the river. We lived on the river. To swim over, swim over back. Ten year olds, we were there, some of us scared of water, started crying. And he told you right there, Boy Scouts don't cry. We're going to swim the river, wipe the tears away. Then he took us for two weeks up in the West Virginia mountains. We had to pitch our own tent. We had to break the lake, the lake fire to go. You had to cook your own meal, and you would take us on a five mile hike. And this is what he said, we're going to make a man out of a boy here. Influence from him still carries over all through my life. After that, I went to Brownsville High School. Every patch kid dreamed of becoming a starter at Brownsville High. I was a starter for two years at quarterback on the football team two years as a catcher on the baseball team. Brownsville was known for their hard-nosed football. There were five of their coaches inducted in this whole thing, and they had five players from Brownsville started for Penn State. Out of the same high school, Brownsville, five were starting at Penn State. They're in this whole thing. At Brownsville High School, we went to camp in the mountain for two weeks, three days. No water, no face masks, always in pads, always full contact. No pain, no gain was the same. The remedy for injury, they had something called a Tommy Bomb. A little Tommy Bomb on its own and a pat on the butt, you'll be all right. <laughs> if you had a headache, no matter what it was, here's two aspirin for you, son, a little pie on the butt, and you won't be fine. <laughs> Ice 30 years in Brownsville, there was a coach named Charles Slick. Some of you probably know in here if you know anything about Brownsville football. Charlie was there 30 years. If you ask anyone about Brownsville, they'll know Charlie. Charlie called every player's son. Charlie compared every player to his grandmother. Charlie talked out of the side of his mouth. Son, my grandmother could run faster than that. Son, get the refrigerator off your back. If you were a minute late, he'd give you the sign. 
Start running, son. That's before practice. After practice, you were still running. But you were never late again. If you backed off, that's one person you didn't want to do it to. He would call you up nose to nose, son. You know what my grandmother would do to you for back talking, you little smart aleck? She has one thing on the stove, it's called a little skill. She'd think you were whacking her in the butt. You had red marks. If that didn't do it, upside the head. A little knot there, and you would never back talk again. That was Charlie Swift. Then I went next to Salem College, where I had great coach Ted Underwood. He had the greatest influence on my life. He was a 30-year man in the service. He coached special forces. He coached Army football. He was my only coach. I had one coach in college, Coach Underwood. He wanted our team to be like the special forces. He was the defensive coach, the offensive coach, the special teams coach. He did it all, and he wanted it to be like family. He wanted it to be like his 15 special forces. He wanted you to love one another. He wanted you to be prepared. He wanted you to call him Papa. He wanted you to pop, pop Underwood. He wanted to win football games. But more than that, he wanted to graduate. Salem has some great football teams. When I was there, I started a quarterback for four years. I started as a catcher on the baseball team for four years. I received many honors. In 1988, I was inducted into the Salem Hall of Fame with Jack Delaplane. He went on to play with the Seahawks. Also a player at Salem was Jimbo Fisher. He's now the head coach at Texas A&M. He won the national championship at Florida State. Top Underwood's famous coach was, you give me a scholarship, I give you a scholarship, but I can't give you effort, I can't give you desire, and I can't give you heart. Bring your own bottle? No, here you bring your own dust. That's in the intestinal fortitude. That's what I want from you. I gave you a scholarship. You give me the guts. If you don't have guts and you don't like contact, I'm going to tell you so long. But I want to see you graduate. But if you have heart, that's what I'm asking of you. And his famous sayings were, whip the man in front of you. If we're going to win, you have to whip the man in front of you. I heard that thousands of times. And then he says, all it takes is all you got. Defensive line, give me all you got. Don't give me 50%, give me 100. That's what special forces do. He had his wife, if a senior was birthday, her, your birthday, bake a cake for you. And the seniors would come in. Guess what you would do? She had love one another on that cake. And she would talk to you at least 15 minutes about loving one another. She was part of that program. Next, I went to Best Center High School. I became the coach there. That was a jointure of Senator Hill and East Beth. Pete Daly was a coach at Centerville. His player was Red Worrell. Red Worrell and Pete Davey, that they're in this Hall of Fame. Red Worrell was probably the best running back in the country. Red Worrell went to Penn State. Red Worrell gained 414 yards against Navy freshmen. Red Worrell, they say his sophomore year, he was sort of winning the Heisman. Red Worrell came home for Christmas vacation. He and his father were watching bowl games. They wanted to see if they could get a better picture. 
and dad was in the doorway looking out. Rick was outside on an outside building with the antenna. He hit a high tension wire and he was electrocuted. That was everyone in the country. Rick World. Oh, how the whole world moaned. They knew it everywhere about him. He was the greatest. And again, Pete Daly was his coach. He talked to me a lot because he came down with cancer. He said to me, you know what my wish is? I want to be laid next to Rick Borrell. That's my wish. I want to be next to my football player. That's a coach. In Brownsville and Cemetery, it was Red Borrell, and it was his coach, Pete Daly. Pete Daly. Right now, I have a 1975 team. And we have another Hall of Fame next weekend. This team, 75, won it all. Message from Tracy. And yes. now they, they were put him in the Hall of Fame after 42 years. Last night, four or five of the players came to me. This is their Hall of Fame hat and jacket that they're getting. They're in the Hall of Fame after 42 years. It's a sellout of Washington Hall of Fame next weekend. You know how many points this team gave up? You know how many? 24. Not 24 in a game. Not 24 in five games. 24 in 12 games. How about that defense? How about it? <laughs> They had heart, they had hustle, they loved the game tackle. They loved one another. They were brothers. They were all, they all put out a hundred percent. Give it all you got, buddy. One was talking to the other. So that team, again, this is the hat that they have, Hall of Fame. Next I had a player, best center, his name was Fred Puckett. He went to Ohio State. He played at Ohio State. Then he went with the Bears. He won the Brian Piccolo Award. He saw Brian's song, the movie, Brian's and Gail Sayers. Then he went and coached for Ohio State for 24 more years. He went and coached the pros for 10 years. In 2015, what did he do? He coached the Super Bowl, won it. My shelf back. The best center was voted NFL linebacker coach of the year. Vaughn Miller was his linebacker, linebacker of the year. Here's what I got. And my shelf back, here's what he sent me. How about this? Super Bowl won it. Here he is, buddy. My champion. Back. Sent me the hat, the jacket, and the program. I love these hats, and they know it. So again, that was part of that. Then I went to Denora. Denora was a combination of Denora and Longahela, the greatest opportunity. Tom Jordan's here. He was my first quarterback. They moved us up to Quad A. He was the leader to set me on a program at the North, at Ringgold. They moved us up to Quad A. What did I do? I went to the North and found Malcolm Lomax. I said, Malcolm, you got to get me the speed of the North. Get me the speed. He took me and Jan Hay, the defensive coordinator, sitting here, and he got to the North player. Malcolm Lomax, he's up looking down on us today. He went and brought them all in for me. And we had speed, we had it together. We had great players. Then we won the Quad A champs in 1982 at Ringgold High School. They have never done it since. Now they have Marcus McCullough, the new head coach. Hopefully he can do the same. Larry Hall went to West Virginia. Bernie Kirk went to Pitt. Mark Price. And we had 
Wando, he's here today. Other kids from Rainbow High School. The big play we had, we beat Newcastle 6-3 in the final game. Tough game. We beat our equipment that year. You're not going to beat Newcastle. They were on our one yard and our line, score 6 3. First down and 10 on the one. Ken Hayden's here. He called the 50 back. We had a little linebacker, Harry McCullough. 5 foot 8, 140. He blitzed through that gap. And he hit him as a handoff. They caught it up. We recovered that fumble and we held on to that 6 3 lead. Scotty Henson was our quarterback and our punter. We were back on our own eight yard line. He hit a punt and went up in the air, landed on the 50 and rolled 30 more yards. It was an 80 yard punt. Remember that pack on the goal line, those two plays, the championship. I just want to just mention, uh, I have Bell Burnham yet and I had Faye. Every Faye, he went, Another great player I had. He went to Penn State, broke the record. He kicked for 282 points, broke the Penn State kicking record. He was great all around. Quarterback, throw, run, handle the ball. He was like another coach. Also, I had Joe Rudolph. He just went to Virginia Tech from Wisconsin. And two people come up and said, Joe said to say hi to you. He was some kind of super player. I mean, a blocker, an offensive line. And hurrying through, we had a chance to win it all at Belburn. We were winning 7 0 out of Whitman in the third quarter. Then they broke a long touchdown, 7 7. We lost that game 14 7. That was my fault. I should have won that game. I had a good team. That's my fault. Blame thoughts here. I wanted that championship at Belburn in high school. But again, it didn't happen. In ending, I thought my coaching was over. I was in a crown ministry. I was in a ministry for the sick. I was a rosary maker. And the priest called me and said, come here. I want you to go to prison ministry for me. I want you to go there and take the lifers. The prisoners that are in there forever. They're in your life. I need someone to be a coach for Christ. He said, would you do it? Would you go into their prison? Some of these prisoners haven't had someone visit them in 20 years. I'll do it. That'll help you get to heaven. So I went in, four years I did this. I sat across from the prisoners. They're like, do you know the first thing they wanted from me? Forgiveness. They thought forgiveness. They talked about love. They talked about sports. You couldn't ask them their crime. You know what they did? They told me their crime. They wanted forgiveness. And then they said, tell me about Jesus. That's why I was a good for Christ. That was a great feeling. And then this is the last end. I want to say this. This is my son of whom I am most proud. He coached Division I football for 30 years. He's my son, he coached in North Carolina. He coached in East Carolina. 30 years in Division I football. He just retired. In 2016, he was voted into the Hall of Fame, the strength coach. And this is the best. 2017, he was selected as the National Collegiate Coach of the Year. My son. My son.